Hi, welcome to this video about statistics with ArchiWord and the package ArchiTeaching. In this video, we are going to see how to use ArchiWord and ArchiTeaching in order to perform a statistical test. Well, first of all, open the booklet with the practices and go to practice number 11, hypothesis test. Let's go to exercise one. In this exercise, it says the active ingredient concentration of a random sample of 10 drugs containers drawn from a batch are this. I have a sample with 10 concentration of active ingredient. We're going to load this data set as usually. For that first, you need to load the architecture package. So go to settings, manage our packages and plugins and here Look for the architecture package. That is here. Unload it. Then go to the workspace tab and in other environments you will see all the packages that are loaded. One of them is architecture. Unfold it and the data set is active ingredient this one well remember that you have to make a copy of this data set to my work space so right click and copy to global environment and now you can open it and you will see that it contains one variable just one variable with the, the active ingredient concentration of a sample of 10 containers well part b asked to test the two side hypothesis the Null hypothesis is mu, the mean equals 18, versus the alternative hypothesis, the mean is different of 18, with a significance level 0 0.05, that means alpha 0 0.05. Well, in order to uh, to perform this test with ArchiWord, you have to go to the, to the menu teaching, parametric test, means, and t-test for the mean of one population. So let's go to menu teaching, parametric test, means, and t-test for the mean of one population because I want to test the mean for just one population. In this dialog, all you have to do is select the variable that you want to test the mean for, that is concentration. And finally, in test options, you have to set the properties of the test. Here, you have to enter the value of the mean in the null hypothesis, that is 18 in this case. I want to check if the mean is 18 or alternatively, if it's di different, in this case, we have a two side test, greater or less. Well, in this case, the alternative hypothesis is different. So this is a two side hypothesis test. So we are going to set two side and that's all submit. And here, we get a table with the t-test, with the result of the t-test concentration. It contains the confidence interval at the end, as we've seen in the previous practice, but now we are interested in the p-value of the test that appears here. And this p-value is 0 0.94, so it's a big uh, p-value, it's close to 1, so that means that the, the type 1 error, that is the probability of committing a mistake if we decided to reject the null hypothesis, is pretty, pretty high. So it's not a good idea with this p-value to reject the null hypothesis. And in fact, if we apply the rule for tests, since the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, the significance level, we are not going to reject the null hypothesis. So we are going to maintain the null hypothesis. So I can say that there is no significant evidence in this sample in order to say that the mean is different of 18. Well, and the reason is because, as you can see, the estimated mean, that is the mean of the sample, is pretty close to 18, so it's a bad idea to reject the null hypothesis in this case. Well, in part C, it asks for another two-side test. In this case, the null hypothesis, the mean is equal to 19.5, and the alternative hypothesis is the mean is different from 19.5. Again, with a significance level 0 0.05, and also with a significance level 0 0.01. Well, all you have to do is just run again, 
And here in test auctions, just change the value of the null hypothesis that is now 19.5. Again, it's a two side test. So just submit. And here, again, you get the p value for the new test that is now 0 0.023. Well, now the p value is pretty, pretty small. So if we compare this with the significance level 0 0.05, we can reject the null hypothesis because the p value is less than 0 0.05. And in this case, I can say that there is a significant evidence that the mean of this sample is different from 19.5. So I reject the null hypothesis if I set the significance levels at 0 0.05. But if we set the significance level at 0 0.01, in that case, we cannot reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is greater than, than alpha, is greater than 0 0.01. So I can say that with this sample, there is a significant evidence to reject the null hypothesis with a significance level 0 0.05, but not with a significance level 0 0.01. Well, in Part D, again, it asks for a test, uh, for a two-side test. In this case, the null hypothesis is the mean equals 17, and the alternative hypothesis is different from 17, again, with a significance level 0 0.05. So just run again, go to test options, and here change 19.5 by 17. And two-side, submit. And here you get a p-value 0.12. Okay, so again, if you set a significance level 0.05, I cannot reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is greater than 0.05. So I can say that there is no significant evidence with this sample to uh, say that the mean is different from 17. As you can see, uh, the mean, the estimated mean is uh, almost one unit far from 17, but it's not enough to reject the null hypothesis. Now we are going to uh, test also a one-side hypothesis test. Imagine that you know or you are sure that the mean eh, could not be less than 17, so in this case it makes no sense to apply uh, two sides test. So we are going to apply this test now. In the null hypothesis is the same, and eh, the mean is 17, but now the alternative hypothesis is the mean is greater than 17 with a significance level 0 0.05. So if you want to apply a one-side test, just run again, go to test auctions tab, and here, uh, instead of, uh, in the alternative hypothesis field, instead of selecting two sides, select one side and greater, because I want to test if the mean is greater than 17. Then submit. And here now, as you can see, the p-value uh, is half of the p-value of the two side tests. Anyway, with this p-value, we cannot reject the null hypothesis if we set a significance level 0 0.05, because yeah, this value is greater than 0 0.0. So now, even if we apply a one side test, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. Okay, in part E, it says, if the manufacturer of the drug affirms that he has increased the active ingredient concentration with respect to previous batches, where the concentration was 17 milligrams cubic millimeter, can we believe it? Okay, in order to answer this question, I have to test if the mean is 17 against the alternative hypothesis of the mean is greater than 17, because uh, this is what affirms the manufacturer. Always the alternative hypothesis is what the researcher wants to prove. So here, the alternative hypothesis is going to be a one-side hypothesis greater than 17. That is precisely the, the, the test that we performed uh, in the previous part. And with this p-value, obviously, if we set a uh, significance level 0 0.05, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So I cannot believe the uh, manufacturer. In order to believe the manufacturer, and we need to reject the null hypothesis, and that's not the case because the p-value is greater than 0 0.05. Be careful with this because we are not saying that the manufacturer is a liar. We just say that with this sample we have not enough evidence, statistical evidence, in order to reject the null hypothesis, in order to believe that the drug has a concentration greater than 17. 
Well, and the last part of this exercise is what's the sample size required to detect an increase of the concentration mean of 0.5 mg cubic millimeter with a significance level 0.05 and now with a power 1 minus beta, remember the power of a test is 1 minus beta, where beta is the uh, type 2 error, is 0 0.8. The sample size in a test depends on several factors. One is the variability of, of data that you don't control at all, and the other are the significance level that you want and the uh, power of the test. Okay, so first I need to estimate the variability of data and for that we are going to use the corrective standard deviation. So go to teaching first, descriptive statistics and statistics and here select the variable concentration and go to basic statistics and here we're going to use the corrected standard deviation as an estimator of the standard deviation of the population because the, the standard deviation of the sample uh, underestimate the, the standard deviation of the population. So it's better to correct it and this is the corrected standard deviation. Then submit and here you get that the corrected standard deviation is 1.7871 and we're going to copy this and we're going to use this as an estimator of the standard deviation of the population. So now, in order to compute the sample size, go to teaching parametric test means and sample size for the t-test. Teaching parametric test means and sample size for the t-test. And here you have to uh, select the type of test that you want to perform. This is a test for just one population. And the alternative hypothesis is one side, because I want to check if the active ingredient concentration has increased. And here you have to enter the difference that you want to detect between the means, that is 0 0.5, and also the standard deviation, that is the value that we got in the previous procedure. So paste this value here. And finally, select the significant level that you want for your test and the power, that is 0 0.05 and 0 0.8. Then submit, and here you get the sample size. So that is, you need approximately 80 containers in order to perform a one sign test, in order to see if the active ingredient concentration has increased at least 0 0.5 milligrams with a confidence level 0 0.05 and a power 0 0.8. Okay, now let's go to exercise two. In this exercise, uh, in a survey performed by a university about the use of the library, a random sample of 34 students has been asked whether they go to the library at least once a week. Well, we're going to load first this dataset. The name for this dataset is library. So right click, copy to global amp and open library. Okay, you have a look to the dataset. It contains two variables, but we're going to use only the first one. So forget about the gender. Eh? Answer is a qualitative variable that it contains two possible values, two categories, no and yes, whether the students goes or not to the library regularly. Well, in order, in, in part B, it, it asks for testing if the, if the percentage of students that use the library at least once a week is greater than 40%. Well, in this case, it makes no sense to test the mean because this variable is qualitative, so the means makes no sense, and we're going to test the proportion. If you want to test a proportion, you have to go to the menu teaching, parametric test, proportions, and test for one proportion. So let's go to teaching, parametric test, proportions, and test for one proportion, because we have just one population. And here, uh, first you have to select the variable that you want to test the proportion for, that is the answer. It contains two categories, and here select the category uh, for which you want to test the proportion. I want to test the proportion of a student that go to the library, so select C, yes. And now in test options tab, you have to set the parameters for the type of test. Well, here I want to test in the null hypothesis if the percentage is 40%, what is the same if the proportion is 0 0.4. So here you have to set the value for the null hypothesis that is 0 0.4. And I want to test in an alternative hypothesis if the proportion is greater than this value, so I'm going to set a one-side hypothesis greater. And that's all. Submit. 
and here we have uh, the result of the test and as you can see the p-value is 0 0.25 assuming a significance level of 0 0.05 we cannot reject the null hypothesis because this value is rated than 0 0.05 so we don't have enough evidence in order to say that the percentage of students that use the library is greater than 40 percent well this is how to perform a test for a proportion let's go to part three in part three a study tries to determine if there is a difference between the ages at which two population of babies A and B begin to walk by themselves. And in order to test this, and we draw a random sample like this. Okay, well, first we have to load this dataset, but I'm afraid this dataset is not in the architecture package, so you have to create a dataset by typing. I've created one walk. Here we have walk babies. If you double click here, you will see that it contains two variables, the age at which the babies start to walk in months, and the population, that it contains two possible values is a factor, population A or population B. In order to test in part B, if there is a difference between the age means at which babies begin to walk in both population with a significance level 0.05, we're going to go to teaching parametric test means anti-test for comparing the mean of two independent populations. The reason is that the babies in populations A and B are different. These are two different populations, so I have independent populations. So let's go to teaching parametric test means anti-test for comparing the means of two independent populations. And here, first select and the variable for which you want to compare the means that is the age and in according to you have to select the variable that you want to use in order to split the sample in the two groups that you want to compare that is population population contains two categories a and b and here you have to select which category do you want to compare with which yeah. we are going to compare a with b and now go to test options tab and here select the type of test that is going to be to side because it says that we want to see if there is a significant difference, but it doesn't specify in which sense is the difference. Then submit, and here we get three tables. The last two is the result of the t-test, but eh, this one is assuming non-equal variances, and this one is assuming equal variances. So in order, in order to decide which of these two tables should, should I pick, first we need to apply the f-test for comparing variances, because the formula in order to uh, compute the p-value for the t-test for independent population is different depending on if the two populations that you are comparing have more or less the same variance or not, the same variability or not. And for that, we're going to perform first the f-test for comparing variances. In this test, the null hypothesis is that the variance of the two populations is the same. So there is no difference between the variance while the alternative hypothesis is that there is a significant difference between the variances. And the p-value for this test appears here. Well, assuming a significance level 0 0.05, as this p-value is greater than 0 0.05, we can accept the null hypothesis and we can assume that the variances are equal. So now we can go to the last table, that is the t-test assuming equal variances. And here we have the p-value for the test of the comparison of means. And this p-value is 0.013. Again, assuming a significance level 0.05, we can reject the null hypothesis now because the p-value is less than 0.05. And that means that there is a significant difference between the two population of babies. Well, if you want to know which population of babies start to work before, you can go in this table to the confidence interval for the difference of means that as you can see the whole interval is negative so since we are subtracting the mean of population b from the mean of population a we can say that the mean of population b is greater than the mean of population a or what is the same babies in population a start to work before babies in population b in average and they start to work between 0.38 and 3.02 months before in average Okay, let's go to exercise 4. In this exercise, some researchers have observed a greater airways resistance in smokers than in non-smokers. To test the hypothesis, 
we're going to measure the percentage of tracheal bronchial retention that was measured in a sample of persons when they were smokers and after one year of quitting. Here we have the sample. So as usually we're going to load first the data set. The data set is, I think the name is retention. Let's see. Yes, here we have retention. We're going to copy to global M and then open this data set. Uh, as you can see, it contains two variables before, that is the percentage of tracheobronchial retention before quitting smoking and after quitting smoking, one year after. Okay, now in part B, it has performed the test to confirm or reject the hypothesis of researchers. Well, the hypothesis was that uh, smokers have a greater percentage of retention. So in this case, the new hypothesis is that there is no difference, as usually, between the means. And the alternative hypothesis is going to be that is that smokers, that is the variable before, has a mean greater than non-smokers, that is after. So this is a one-side test. And in this case, since these variables come from the same individuals, we have only one population, but we are measuring the retention percentage at two times before and after quitting a smoke. So this is a per population. And for that reason, in order to perform the test, you have to go to teaching parametric test means and t-test for comparing the means of two pair populations. So let's go to teaching parametric test means and t-test for comparing the means of two pair populations. In this dialog, all you have to do is select uh, compare the mean of population before with after and then go to the test options tab and here select the type of uh, uh, alternative hypothesis that is going to be a one side greater because I want to see if the retention percentage is greater before than after then submit and here we get the p-value for the test that is 0 0.015 assuming a significance level 0.05 we can reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is smaller than 0 0.05. Okay, so that means that the hypothesis of researchers was true. So with this sample, there is uh, significant evidence that smokers have a greater uh, retention percentage than non-smokers. If you want to quantify the magnitude of the difference, you can have a look to the confidence interval that goes from 3.18 up to infinite. So I can say that since we are subtracting before minus after the means of these two variables, I can say that at least the retention percentage of smokers is 3.185% greater in a smoker than is non in non-smokers in average. Well, and now exercise five is the last one of this practice. It says that in a course there are two groups of students, one in the morning and other in the afternoon. In the morning group, 55 students out of 80 pass, while in the afternoon, only 32 students pass out of 80. Are there significant difference between the percentage of students that pass in the morning and in the afternoon? Okay, so in order to test this, we're going to compare the proportions, because in this case, the, the variable to pass or not is qualitative, so it makes no sense to compare the means and the null hypothesis as usually is going to be that there is no difference between the two groups while the alternative hypothesis is going to be a two-side hypothesis because I want to check just if there are some differences so in order to compare two proportions go to teaching parametric test proportion and test for comparing two proportions let's go to teaching parametric test proportions and test for comparing two proportions and here we are not going to define a variable nor data set because in order to perform the test you only need to know the frequencies and we know the frequencies no in the first sample the morning group i know that 55 students pass that's the frequency and the sample size is 80 students while in the afternoon group the, the sample 2 we have 32 students that pass that's the frequency and the sample size is 90. after that in test auction tab just Select the type of alternative hypothesis that is to cite in this case. And finally submit. And here we get the p-value that as you can see is pretty pretty small. It's 0 0.00003. 
with such a small p-value, obviously we're going to reject the null hypothesis uh, because the p-value is very, very low. Uh, in particular, it's less than 0 0.05. So I can say that uh, there is enough evidence, there's a strong evidence in the sample in order to say that the percentage of the students that pass is different in these two groups. And now, if you want to see in which group the percentage of students that pass is greater, you can have a look to the confidence interval for the difference between proportions, and you will see that it goes from 0 0.178 up to 0 0.485. So the whole interval is positive. Since we are subtracting the proportion of population 2 from the percentage of population 1, that means that the percentage of population 1, as you can see, is greater than the, per the percentage of population 2. That is, in the morning group, the percentage of students that pass is between 17.83 and 48.55% greater than in the afternoon group. So that's all. I propose you to try these exercises. Um, thank you very much for watching this video. Bye-bye.